Good evening. Uh, welcome to the uh, Monday, July 13th, uh, 2015 meeting of the uh, Parks and Recreation Commission. Uh, let's call the meeting to order at uh, 6.40 p.m. Uh, first order of business is to introduce the uh, members of the commission and certain staff members. And then after that, we'll have an introduction of the new staff members as well. But first of all, uh, to my to my far right, Suzanne McDermott, commission member. To my immediate right, Sue Robbins, commission member. Uh, I'm Jack Penders. Uh, to my left, uh, Rose Duster, uh, vice chair of the commission. And uh, Barbara Pine, <coughs> long time, long standing member of the commission. And we'll talk about her later on. Mm -hmm. And the uh, director uh, of the Parks and Recreation Department, uh, Rick Maynard. And to uh, Rick's uh, left, uh, Catherine Stewart, uh, the Commission uh, Recording Secretary. And the, uh, in front of me, uh, the woman behind the camera, uh, Shannon Gale. Uh, moving to item two on the agenda, uh, recognition of new staff. Uh, Rick, I, I ask you to uh, handle that and probably uh, introduce all of the new staff members. Okay. Uh, well, we have new staff. We have our two new program coordinators. Uh, Why don't you have them come up so they can right. get on the camera, too, the and yeah, face right. the audience <laughs> one at a time. <laughs> can you get where you're tied tonight? <laughs> uh, Andrew Turner uh, and uh, Lindsay Wilbur, and um, they've both been here two, three weeks, I think, now, and uh, just jumped, jumped in full steam ahead. <clears throat> In fact, uh, Andrew was uh, helping out with the uh, community picnic and fireworks on, on Saturday. And uh, Lindsay's been taking charge with the beaches and uh, helping supervise the aquatic staff. And we're, we're, their positions are equal, but we divided the duties up to, and uh, the, the, the different tasks of the position divided between the two, two folks here. And uh, they've already done a great job just in a couple weeks they've been here. And so, but I'd also like to recognize uh, Patty Hagerty. Patty, come on up. Patty is now full-time um, uh, administrative assistant to uh, seniors coordinator uh, Terry. She was part time and position with the aid of the grant that we got went full time as of uh, July 1st. Um, and also Tracy Asti is here, and I, I've asked, I invited all staff to come today because what I wanted to, to recognize, to have the commission recognize, is that for a number of months we were without these two positions, without the two program, program coordinators, and um, um, one of our uh, staff was out on a medical leave for six six weeks. And there were days where we had, you know, somebody being out sick or vacation, 70% of our staff not here, mm -hmm. the office staff, and uh, everybody stepped up. Uh, we, we, I spread out the duties amongst the different uh, individuals in the office to uh, make sure everything still ran smoothly, and it did. There was no glitch. Nobody would know that we were missing anybody. Doesn't mean we didn't need them. <laughs> everybody just did a lot of extra work. and, I, and um, and, and Patty and Tracy are two of those who did that. And uh, Ellen, who was away on vacation, uh, and Terry was not able to be here tonight. She's clerking a Board of Education meeting right now. Um, and everybody stepped up and did a tremendous amount of work to keep things going. So I wanted to recognize them. Uh, Ellen had to handle all the program stuff because we didn't have the two program coordinators. And uh, so I want to publicly recognize the great work that, that our office staff did uh, when we were short staffed at the busiest time of year. So I'd like the commission to recognize yes, them. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Now, do, do we, uh, the two new program coordinators are supposed to sing? Uh, they're going to do a duet together? <laughs> <laughs> we're just practicing them. No, but I watched them from the first day they were here running around doing things. So you guys should really fit in beautifully. Mm -hmm. And it's a pleasure to have both of you. Yes. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for your help. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome to stay or uh, you can leave. <laughs> Uh, item three on the agenda is our public forum. This is an opportunity for members of the public to uh, state their views to, uh, to the commission. And uh, a few basic ground rules, uh, if you will. Uh, please uh, limit your individual presentations to three minutes. And also, for the record, please state your name and your address. <coughs> so if there are any, I think there are, uh, Please come forward and let us know. 
I, I think, I, I, just so you know, you folks, I, I think the folks to your right, uh, I, I don't think they're going to make a presentation. They're a part of the Boy Scout community and they're here to observe. So it's yours. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. My name is Maria Cahill and I am a resident of Denison Drive, 84 Denison Drive here in Guilford. Um, I'm here with some of my neighbors and we're basically uh, just keeping tabs on the situation with regard to the uh, dog park. Uh, as you know from the last time we were here, we are very much opposed to the Peddler's Park location being used for the park. Um, I've had some email exchanges with uh, Mr. Maynard, and I understand that there was a walkabout of some sort at Bittner and Peddlers. When we were here uh, two months ago, we had a series of questions. Basically, we asked about whether or not um, what the results of the A2T2 survey, the wetland survey was. I don't think those have been published anywhere. I'm just wondering when we could have access to seeing what those results were. We asked other various questions about um, zoning and the maintenance of the park. And really, a big concern of ours is liability. Who's going to insure this park? Is it through KERMA? Is it through this uh, group of dog park people that are advocating for the dog park? I see that they're raising money. I'm not sure who's financing the dog park. So basically, I think one of my main points is we have a series of questions, and um, although Mr. Maynard has been responsive to my emails, and I appreciate that, I haven't really gotten uh, any um, responses of substance. So I, I, I still, we don't know, we're, we feel like we're in the dark uh, on this. Um, I did see the one page posted notes from the walkabout. I don't know if you're still considering peddlers or if it's out, if Bittner is still in the running, are there other locations that are still being considered? But again, I just want to emphasize for the record uh, that I believe Peddler's Park location uh, is the most ill-suited location. It does abut uh, the property owners where we live on Denison Drive. We are very <coughs> concerned about that. Um, in my opinion, and by the way, uh, just for the record, I am an attorney. I've been practicing law for 15 years. I do civil litigation. I've dealt with nuisance claims and lawsuits for many years uh, at the firm I used to work at in New Haven. I'm currently at a local firm now in Guilford. But I've done the research and the law, and I mean, I'm not here to give anybody a, a civics lesson, and I know you have a town attorney, and I'm sure your town attorney has been um, in discussions with you on this, but I can tell you that my opinion, uh, I believe that this is a potential nuisance, um, a public nuisance and a private nuisance. Um, I mentioned the last time I was here that there is a case currently pending, uh, and it really is very similar facts. And that's been an ongoing litigation for about four <coughs> years now. Uh, the one difference between that case and if, say, hypothetically, this were ever to go in that direction, um, there's four elements of a nuisance cause of action. In that particular case, the homeowners were unaware of what was happening. Um, so in, in this particular case, I think we've made our position very clear. And, and that's important because under our case law, when an action is against the municipality, uh, the plaintiffs need to show that the defendants, by some positive act, created the condition consisting of the nuisance. So I just want that to be clear for the record that uh, our position has not changed. Um, you're, will of, you're very well aware of our opposition. And just quickly, and I don't want to, I know I'm probably over my time, but um, if there's such a great need for a dog park, um, which I still don't understand why there is in this beautiful town in which we live, um, there's got to be a better location for a dog park. I'm a dog person. I have two rescue dogs. Those are my children. I love dogs. Uh, Catherine Kiernan, I know, I don't think she's here this evening, but uh, I was made aware of the fact that after our last meeting, she was uh, upset that she was going to be upsetting people. It seems to me like she's very involved with the town. 
seems to me like she's very proud of her town, and it seems to me that she's very involved with relationships with maybe some of you. Um, I've seen some different postings on her website which have listed dog parks, dog park coming soon, and it almost seems to me like she has a lot more information this than we do. This point you want to sum up, please. And so, if that, I, I'm just really, I'd like some transparency. We'd like some answers, and that's really about it. So thank you for your time, I appreciate it. Thank you, Ms. Cahill. Mr. Coyne. Hi. Oh, Hello again. My name is Pat Coyne. Um, <clears throat> I live at 71 Denison Drive. Uh, this time, I'm going to give you my background because it, it might pertain to some of the topics that I'm going to cover. I'm the vice president at a company called Environmental Data Resources. Uh, before that, I was a, a landfill scientist with Waste Management Incorporated. Uh, and I have a, a Bachelor of Science degree in Environmental Sciences, in, in, a Bachelor of Science degree in Environmental Science. Um, so I'm an expert in wetlands and critical habitat ecosystems and aquifers and groundwater. Um, <clears throat> I too would like to uh, just bring up the fact that we, we thought we came here last time with a lot of questions and we're just looking for, for how the answers to those questions might cut, be channeled back to us, very simply. I think you guys would, would want the same if this impacted your, your uh, your home and your in your uh, neighborhood. So some of the questions that, that we asked last time, and I think some of my other neighbors might get up here and, and, and share all of them, just but just a couple. Uh, it, it it is a, a secluded site. Uh, we're we're not clear on, on what services will be provided to this property. Uh, what's the process after Parks and Rec? Does it go to planning and zoning? Does it go to wetlands? Like how does what's the process it's going to march through? Um, as it relates to wetlands, I too would, I especially would like to see the results of that wetland study. Uh, I know that if you delineate it as it is, you're going to take into consideration some, some of it which is filled and some of it that is wetlands. The, the, the markers are abutting my property, so I saw how it was done. And I just want to remind everybody that the current filled area was filled. So it was filled uh, over the years, but it's also actively filled now through storage of material by Parks and Rec, um, I don't know where the material comes from, and when it leaves the site, I don't know where the material goes. But uh, I do know that every and I've talked to some of you guys about this. You know, every year, uh, some of the, um, the debris that's, that's in the site from previous uses comes up, and you use that material to to fill over and cover it up. Which is, I understand that. But what they're doing each year is they're they're increasing the size of the footprint. So. Any wetland scientist that does uh, assessments of property is going to go, how much has the footprint of this property expanded in the wetlands? And some pictures I think I showed you from last time are like these dirt piles are pushing over wood duck boxes and they're obliterating critical habitat. It's, it's environmental <coughs> when you open the textbooks. So, you know, those, it's really, really compelling what's going on right there. It's very telling. Uh, that's really. Uh, my angle on this. My other neighbors might have a different angle. Uh, we look forward. Look, uh, we look forward to hearing your responses. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Coyne. Hey, uh, my name is Adam Gilbert. I live at one seventy-eight. Denison Drive, and I'm a neighbor of Pat and Maria's, and I'm very much opposed to the dog park. Um, I came up here the last time, and I told you about potential environmental impacts of actually developing the site because it is proximal to a wetland site. I think tonight I'm going to talk about um, the fact that um, that basically this area abuts upon our residents in terms of where we live. Um, any public town <coughs> area is going to be suspect to public use, or suspect to public use, which is probably a good thing. But I would like to know at least what is being considered in order to ensure security at the area. I'd like to know who's going to ensure it. I've been told by a neighbor that this area used to be a public park where there used to be a lot of kids that would sit up late at night and drink. Same thing could happen at a dog park. Um, you know, that's sort of a, a general concern I have for an area that is actually quite close to my property. Um, and I, you know, I think we came here the last time looking for some answers, and at least for my checking the town website or looking at the YouTube videos of previous town meetings, I, I certainly haven't been given any answers towards any of these uh, questions I think that we asked. 
Another thing I'd like to point out around transparency is that mm -hmm. at least in terms of the minutes of the walkthrough that you guys did, I assume at Bittner and at Peddlers, um, the minutes actually don't even list that you actually were in Bittner. I'm assuming this is a minutes that was signed by you, Mr. Mm -hmm. Maynards. I don't even think it says, at least in the draft minutes, that you were in Bittner at all. You pointed out you were going through Peddlers, but the top section of the minutes don't even, at least when I read them, didn't even talk about the dog, um, the area that you were looking through. Perhaps this is an oversight, but I think we're here trying to look for transparency and fairness. And I read that, and to me, it doesn't seem like there's very much transparency, and it almost seems like um, a, a deliberate uh, way of actually absconding what's going on. So I'm in a position where. I don't really feel like, you know, I actually have a good idea of what's going on. I don't know what your intent is in terms of trying to make things transparent to us. I think it looks like an omission. I just want to say that. I mean, this, yeah. you know, it just looks it's like an omission of work. It wasn't a deliberate. It was a bit. It just yeah. right. doesn't right. say that 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 we But in the draft bitter. copy of the minutes that you guys have published, I mean, right. I, but I send work draft, emails so. all the time, um. you know, leaving out the main subject of the, of the <coughs> minutes is, Yes, but understand, yeah, we, we haven't even approved yeah, the minutes yeah, yet. Yeah, we so. haven't even approved the minutes. We haven't, approved, we haven't gotten there. Okay, but you publicly posted them and released them, which I appreciate. So I hope you will correct that. It's and draft be, minutes and so correct. It's his draft. And there'll be a correction. I hope it would be as transparent as we're asking for. Oh, are there any other, <coughs> any other public comments? I'm Larry Backus. I'm at 142 Denison. And uh, I just am going to give my three minutes to you to help explain to us what the process is, because we really don't know. And if you could just tell us this is what's going to happen, this is how it works through the process, that would be very helpful. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for the offer, Larry. Um, but that's not the, the form that we have here. It's a public comment section. And, and perhaps later on in the agenda, uh, when Rick Nader makes his uh, director's report, you can shed some light on that. Oh, that'd be fantastic. Thank okay. you. All right. Hi, I'm Amy Alby, and I'm at 35 Denison Drive. And my I talked last time also. Um, I'm a dog owner, as well as um, most of the people sitting here from my street. And my backyard actually butts up right at the trailhead. I think I mentioned last time of. Uh, Peddler's Park, or at least uh, the trailhead to get into the Westwoods, and um, and again, it's already been stated. We would just, I would like more information about the process. My concern last time had to do with the health and safety, not only of the animals, but also for us as residents. Um, there, and I mentioned before, there's a high amount of ticks in that area. Um, there are a lot of weeds, and so when we we understand that there's a volunteer group looking to build a dog park and again I, I wasn't so much opposed to a dog park I just didn't feel our location was most suitable for the environment not just for people but for the animals and kids and that you know I've gone to dog parks before and um, very often are, they are family events and they are communal events um, one is the I, I think it was mentioned just the who's going to maintain that area in terms of removal of waste um, Every spring, depending on how much snow we have, there's a ton of vernal um, pools that form there. And, and where they form one year may not always be where they form the next year. And sometimes, especially behind um, Pat's house, you can almost um, not get to the entrance to the Westwoods because of so much water. And so, and not disrupting the ecosystem, how would that all look as, as far as just say Parks and Rec approved the dog park to be there. Where exactly will it be? Is it out of the way of um, the vernal pools? And then just in terms of the environment, the, the garbage that seeps up, the maintenance of it, um, the cost analysis of what maintaining a property like that would look like, and, and of course security. I mean, as it stands right now, it's summertime. Um, where I'm a second house in, so I get strangers trespassing through my yard. And if we see them, we'll say something, but otherwise there's people who let their dogs off leash just walking up to the Westwood trails. And again, it's not highly monitored. And so a person lets their dog off leash. They may mess in our yard. They may run into some of this debris. And so again, it's just answers to some of those questions so that we 
feel better about you know what the town decides. Thank you very much. Well, I'd like to, in, in particular, I'd like to thank the, the group of five. Uh, as an individual, though, I, I just don't like the comments made by the, the speaker before. There were some unfounded allegations about this committee, this commission, and, and the staff. Perhaps it's, it's a lack of a, a full aware, awareness of the process, but that doesn't help our process. I mean, it's not going to affect us in any way, but we're volunteers and the staff is paid. And we don't need that aggravation in terms of personal attacks. It shouldn't be aggravation. You guys should be moving into the draft minutes. There should be care taken in terms of writing them and posting them, especially Rick, when it's the way that there was going to be a sidewalk for this. Right, yes. the, the, uh, the public forum is over now. Let's move on to agenda item number four, correspondence. We have several items of correspondence uh, that received the minutes. Do you want to start off with the uh, the letter uh, from Sarah Seneca in your response? It's a July seventh, uh, June seventh, uh, June thirtieth, rather, letter to you. And then a response of July seventh. You want to? Yeah, I'm just, uh, uh, sorry, Jeremiah, in a different order. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah, they gave us a, a sizable donation um, on behalf of one of our, uh, a, a woman who was a very active senior with us. And um, so I think I sent a note back to her that we would, uh, we have to deposit that into an um, account that will benefit seniors. Uh, Terry and I had a little conversation about it. This all happened last week, and I'm, uh, I've been away, so I haven't been home, back in the office to speak with Terry much more about it. <clears throat> but um, it was uh, what, late last week, I think, we got the uh, the donation. Um, but we're very thankful that uh, that um, uh, evidently the a don donation was made to Sarah Seneca, but they knew she was very involved in the community center, so they wanted to turn some of that money over to us, which. Uh, Again, we'll use it to benefit seniors. It may be um, to help out. She was, she was really active with um, one of our exercise programs, and she was here for meals all the time. And yeah. So we've talked about looking at for maybe a little help in the kitchen. We may use it for that, uh, which wouldn't affect the town budget. And uh, so we're, we'll have some more conversation. We'll let you know once we have more discussion about what where we might put that. That was a nice surprise. Yeah, yeah. sure was. That's why I see is the, uh, the boat rack from PJ Malafranca. Yes, he had completed the boat rack uh, and also um, uh, after I did this, another young man. Uh, I think that was Sam Guerrero. Sam Guerrero, thank you. Yeah, Sam Guerrero also uh, made two boat racks. So we have three. So we have 237 spaces now. That's fabulous. Beach. And so they're all filled, right? We'll accommodate everybody who's on the wait list. That's okay. Well, that's great. A series of correspondence <clears throat> as far as the, the raking. Well, uh, let's see. At the no, no, this was at uh, Daniel, Avenue. Daniel Avenue Beach, and um, so originally um, there's a group, the Monokatuck Audubon Society. They uh, have this project, Limulus, where they they tag the uh, horseshoe crabs that come up on Daniel Avenue Beach, and they were the, under the impression that from May 10th to July 15th you can't rake the beach with like a machine. And uh, our crew, uh, I'm sorry, you can't reach below the below the high tide line. Um, and we had a one of our guys went down there um, early to mid June, I think it was, and um, and raked and raked below the high tide line. But meanwhile, um, I got a letter from 
Susan Jacobson from DEP saying we can break the whole tide, the whole tide, the, sorry, the, the high tide, high tide, tide line. Um, that uh, you can't um, bulldoze a beach. You can't change the grade of a beach, but you can rake it even with the machines that we use to rake. And so we were totally uh, okay in what we did. Um, I spoke with um, Judith Knowles afterwards about that, and she, uh, she, I originally apologized to her that maybe we did something that was below what we were supposed to do. Right, right. She then apologized to me for, for bring, making an issue when it wasn't. So, right. but what I've told my guys anyway, let's let's just stay away from the high tide line yeah. uh, until July 15th. Anyway, even though we can do it, we're we're, we're not going to do it. Okay. So, well, we can starting next week. Because it has to do with the horseshoe crab eggs, right? Correct. And, and the eggs will be hatched. Correct. And they'll be tagged. Hatched July 15th. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But again, technically we can, but we we'll, we know there's a, a, a lot of horseshoe crabs in that area. There, we just won't do it. Uh, well, actually, we can. Look, it's within the regulation. We can. Yes. It permits you to do that. We can. Yeah. Yeah. But as we know, it's that it's not necessary. Nobody swims there. Right. Um, the right. biggest project uh, there was that um, horseshoe crab project. So yeah. I think we would want to um, recognize. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We appreciate that. Yeah. Now, now, will Ms. Knowles know that? I've spoken with her. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It, it doesn't suggest it here. Yeah, no, she called, she called me uh, after this at some point. We had a conversation. Okay. Yeah. Bring it in. She's a, a Madison resident, and um, she was concerned when we had our summer sizzler down at Jagas Beach. We had music facing the water because people sat on the beach listening to the music. The concert was over by 7 o'clock, um, but sound travels over water. And she lives, I guess, on Circle Beach or Neck, Neck Road there, you know, across the... Um, no, no, she lives between Neck Road in Madison and Circle Beach in Madison. Bridgeview Road connects them. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know exactly where her house is, but whatever, she heard the music. It's on the and, shore. And uh, About she's... A mile and a half or two miles away from... Of Jacob's Beach. Okay, well, wow, that's farther than I thought. Um, anyway, she was concerned about the music, uh, you know, and so um, I, she had contacted um, First Luckman Mazza, and I also her First Luckman in um, in uh, Madison, and uh, Joe Mazza asked me to write a letter, what, you know, let him know what, what happened, and I said the concert was, it was a group of doctors, it's the take two and call me in the morning group, and uh, I could stand 40 feet in front of the band and have a conversation. But I understand sound travels over water, but... Yeah, but this is not the first year we've had them down there, and this is not the first summer Correct. Mm -hmm. So but this hasn't been a problem in the past, is what There was a problem, well, the same individual had a concern when we had the Battle of the Bands there a few years That's ago. That's different. The Battle of the Bands is not the summer sizzler when no. we, this group right. is playing. But yeah. she also cites three, two other dates Which are that not. we didn't have anything going no, on. No. I can right. attest to the fact that the music from either the Guilford Yacht Club or the Moorings travels at least two to three miles because I mm -hmm. can hear it at my house and I live much further away. Yeah. And you can hear the lyrics and I don't think it's anything at Jacob's Beach that yeah. we're sponsoring, but they have really big amplifiers. I, I think it's one of those two mm -hmm. places uh, that is the problem. Well, they investigated uh, and she also sent a copy of the letter, or addressed a letter to uh, uh, Regina Reed, Reggie Reed, mm -hmm. who's our zoning uh, enforcement officer. Mm -hmm. And, well, and I, I, she cites a no, noise ordinance. There uh, is a noise ordinance. Yeah, and I, I think we're exempt from We are. We are. For certain the fireworks certainly exceeds yes. the noise ordinance. Right. <laughs> right. But nonetheless, we are exempt, but the moorings and the Guilford Yacht Club aren't exempt. So I if they that. wanted to follow up mm -hmm. um, with those two organizations, they have to stop, I believe it's 10 o'clock. Am I right, Kathy, that the ordinance says anything you can hear in your neighbor's next door yard practically has to stop at 10, 10 p.m. Right, so really the subject about Jacob's Beach every right. year. Well, you know, I mean, it, 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 it's part of the uh, ambiance that people sit on the beach and, you know, and they listen to the music and, you know, I don't know if we stop it, but again, it was over at 7 o'clock, so it was not like it was obnoxiously late or loud or anything. Well, aren't there two dates in here that were cited for noise, but we had no activities? Right, correct. Yet. So that kind of echoes the thing that Barbara said, that it it's got to be from maybe yeah. the other two sources. Mm -hmm. so. 
Yeah, we are uh, next Thursday, um, the week, this, not this week, but next week, uh, we have a movie night scheduled down there. It's not going to start till 8.30. And there's going to be a, some speakers. You know, people, there's going to be noise from the, the movie. Um, it's not a, a lack of saw movie going back to the night. A saw movie. <laughs> oh, okay. yeah. Earthquake with sense I'm, around. I'm it's going to be frozen. So it, oh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so no, it's not like loud. Christmas in July kind of thing. But so it's anyway, scary, and it was Andrew who you just met. Andrew's idea to go with that movie. We're going to try to get snow cones. They have them for the kids and everything. It's a great uh, idea. Uh, so that's going to. And right now the plan is to have people sitting on the beach. Beach, watch it so that the sound would be projected toward the water. We'll try to aim it toward Falkers Island a little bit more. Um, it's either going to be there or we sit on the grass. But I think, again, ambiance, you want people sitting on the beach, I think, watching this. The grass will be fucking. Yeah, exactly. So that's scheduled for. Uh, but we have done that in the past as well. We've right. We've had movies on the beach. We've had yeah, the big giant screen and big outdoor okay, movie. So yes. These aren't yeah. new, noisy things that we're doing. No. So. All right. But the water does, unfortunately, amplify yeah. that noise. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll try to face the speakers a little differently so they you know, have a little less impact. Okay. All right. All right. Oh. And item number five. <clears throat> Approval of the minutes of the uh, June 1st meeting uh, and the park walk on uh, June 8th. Can you do them separately? Yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah. 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 Of course. I'll move the um, minutes of the June 1st meeting. Is there a second? Can I have a second? I'll second. Okay. Uh, any uh, corrections or omissions, modifications? In the minutes of, uh, of June 1st, uh, 2015. Please say aye. 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 I have to abstain. I was not here. Aye. Kathy. Kathy. I have to you, abstain. I wasn't here. Yeah. Okay. No, I didn't know if you heard me. <laughs> Just making sure. Motion carries. Here, uh, the second part of the, uh, the site walk, <coughs> excuse me, the site walk notice and agenda for Monday, uh, June 8th, 2015. Yep. We need to amend it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To reflect um, this first sentence, uh, commission members, Mr. Cunningham and Mr. Maynard walk in the area adjacent to the rear parking lot to consider the rear parking lot probably put in a uh, Bittner Park. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to consider this area for a possible dog park. And I apologize, that was my omission. What happens? You're just not a good secretary. <laughs> <laughs> um, are we making a motion? So, to did do you that? Move, why don't you make, make a motion? motion? Correction. Uh, make a motion to accept the meeting minutes with the addition of Bittner Park in the first paragraph, first line. Their, um, parking lot of Bittner Park to consider this area for a possible dog park. Second. All those in favor? Any minutes? Aye. 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 I abstain. I wasn't there. So. And <clears throat> agenda item six the review uh, and approval of expenditures for June. 2015. So it's a different format. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, let's review them first and, and then we'll make a motion to accept. Okay. I say review them now because we're just getting them now. Yeah. Um, so what the, let me just tell you what the bottom line would be if you go to page four. Mm -hmm. 
see where it says month of date actual on the top, and then you go down total parks and rec, and our general fund is 111,474.56. That's what it would be. Rick, I just want to ask, I know last month Waste Tech wasn't, we didn't have the, the uh, line item in there, the amount. Is it in this month? Yes, it's in twice. It's in twice? <laughs> yeah. Okay. If you see on page three, okay. underground maintenance, 55202. Okay. See the top there, it's Waste Tech, and then oh, yeah. I see it. it's okay. in there again. All right. I move that we approve the bills at a total of $111,474.56. There's a second. second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Extensions? Carried. Agenda item seven <clears throat> uh, Parks and Recreation Commission uh, reports. Uh, Rick? Do we want to go through any of them? Are there any specific questions? I had a couple of questions. Um, for Jacobs, um, can we just review the plan in place for the weed um, control down there? If, if the same person that's watering last yeah, year is fact, doing it? He, yeah, he was weeding um, it's, it's before the 4th weed. of July weekend. He was weeding like the entrance area and, and the island to the left. Mm -hmm. That's where he started. Yeah. And he's been working his way back. Okay. So yeah. it's the same person? Yes. Okay. And um, have we thought about um, reinventing how we secure the chairs? I see that they're secured, but we had that unfortunate episode last year where you someone- secured them in a little different way. Took them. Okay, so they're we secured changed in a different it. way. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to give too many details. No. <laughs> <laughs> Just that it's been changed is good yeah. enough. And um, I've talked to John twice about the boulder. Yeah. And. Um, there hasn't been a, a good one that's popped out of the ground yet from the work he's doing, but we really need to. We can clear a couple out of Peddler's Park, a couple big rocks down there. <laughs> um, we do need to address that because we, we have that lovely plaque that we need to put out, yeah. and it's it's gone. I don't know if there's another source that we can go to. Uh, I wonder if we just go to Shelley, you know, Shelley maybe, the monument place, see if they might have a good bowl or someplace. Have we uh, checked even down at the stump dump? I went down there one time last year with my husband, and as we were going through, I said, back up, back up, there's a boulder um, that we could use at Jacob. So I'm wondering if we should look down there or, or if there's any other places that, um, you know, we've put stuff that might have a boulder tucked away somewhere that we've forgotten about that may be the right kind. I just feel like we need to get that plaque Yeah, right. no, I know it's been sitting on my table for what, over a year now, and I've talked to John a couple times too, and um, I think he's pretty busy. Yeah. Um, so you know what, so uh, why don't I check with a couple things. I will check with Shelly, maybe they can go with me to look at something, because they got to have something that's flat enough flat that they can you know, go on. Um, have a look at something down at the Stump Dump. We could look down at the Peddlers, there are some pretty good sized boulders down yeah. there. Maybe Public um, Works could pick one up. Yeah, yeah. Positive. Okay. Anything else on this report? Anything you want to highlight on Ellen's report? Uh, I'll just tell you the camps, Camp, Camp Minocatuck is going great this year in terms of numbers. It really is. Our first session we had 130 or 140 kids and normally the first session because of the 4th of July weekend is it's a smaller numbers. It's usually about 80 or 90. We had a, it was either 130 or 140. We have 140 this session. That's great. Um, the staff is doing a great job. Um, uh, you know, we're doing the um, sailing camp uh, with the Yacht Club, and that's that's going very well. It's, it's filled up. Um, you know, our sports camps are going well. I mean, everything is going very, very, the numbers are good. Okay. When's, Preschool the, when, camp. when's the last session in? For... We have a, uh, it's around August 17th, you know, around the, whatever that Friday is, but we're doing a, a, a one-week session at the end because school's starting later that's this year. That's what I was going to ask, yeah. It's uh, called Superheroes. Okay. And uh, Jack is going to dress up like Superman and come down and <laughs> <laughs> be at it. But uh, it's a, it's a special one week camp that, that we're doing that, that last week. So it's the, What's that I know the date in my head, it's around August 20th to tw you know, 27th, something like that. Okay, so how There's a flyer downstairs. Oh, okay. it, yeah, flyer yeah. It's, it's, a, it's in the vault brochure. And, it was a brochure. Uh, well, we've added it. Is it a brochure? No, we have a flyer because we've added it afterwards. Yeah. No, is it just for like, it, it, or is it for the older kids too? Like, like you have like, I know you have the day camp kind of thing, but do you have, I don't know, 
Selfishly asking. Um, well, it's definitely f kids entering first through six. I'm not sure okay. about older net. I, I'd have to look. Quite frankly, I don't know. I have to look at the flyer. Okay. Um, but but yeah, but all the sessions are, are uh, yeah. the numbers are very very good. We're very very pleased with that. And beaches are running pretty smoothly. So we're I was going to say the attendance of the beaches. Yeah. Phenomenal. I was at Jacobs. Uh, I think it was a Sunday of Fourth of July weekend. I believe it was that Sunday. I was here all three days, but I'm trying to think the day that I. The entire parking lot was filled, and all the grass area was filled with cars. And there were no picnics. It was just people for the beach. There were That's no picnics great. scheduled that day. So it wasn't because there were 30 or 40 people at each of the picnic shelters. Mm -hmm. It was on the beach, and then, then people are yeah. flocking to Jacobs Beach now because of the improvements. I'm sure mm -hmm. it's because of the improvements down there. It's just so much nicer, and people are enjoying coming there and and being. Um, part of that whole experience at the beach. Yeah, that's great. I think that might also contribute to the success of the camp this year as well. Yes, yeah. And if you saw, it was it this week or this week, I think, in the Courier, um, or last week, I'm sorry, we're Monday now. Um, there was an article about camp in there. Mm -hmm. And um, um, the week before, we had an article about the uh, the fireworks and the community picnic. And also last week, the article about the um, concerts coming up. Mm -hmm. So we're getting a lot of good press in the Courier right now. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, we had a beautiful day for her, mm -hmm. and um, fireworks I thought were pretty good too. Yeah. They're always awesome. And uh, you want to comment at all or fill in any of the gaps with uh, the park foreman's report or Terry Buckley? You don't have to. They've been busy. You've been busy. Yeah. Um, Unless there's something you know, that jumps out at you. Well, just you know, a couple things I was mentioning very clearly about Maine. It's um, we uh, we're, the Little League is hosting state championships this year. Uh, state Little League, I think rookie level, or they might be able to call them minors now. Um, districts are they're they're playing here every week, and then this state championship is I think August first, second, somewhere around there I think. Um, and um, it, it's kind of an honor for, for the Guilford Little League to be hosting state championships here. And uh, I got a call from one of the guys from Little League who mentioned that um, last week he said the field looked like Yankee Stadium. Um, and this is a guy who tends to be a little critical sometimes of the way the field looked. And he said the guys did a great job. It looked like Yankee Stadium. The clay looked great. great. The field yeah. looked wonderful. Uh, you know, of course, we've got range. So the grass is green. And we don't have irrigation on the outfield there. So. Um, yeah, it was nice, so I, I, I pass it on to the guys because they're the ones that do the work, and I let them know that they were very, very pleased with the condition of the field. The guys are working hard, as they always do, and um, yeah. they're doing the, the typical hard work. Yeah. Agenda item eight. Report on the Standing Fields Committee, if you had one. Uh, just um, off gate date, we... Uh, um, Paul Schmidt wrote some um, specs for going out for engineering services to do the design work for the Upper Cox renovations, which we have money in the budget to do the renovations. He's the chairperson of that commission, right? Paul Schmidt's chairperson yeah. of, yeah, and he's an engineer, so he wrote the specs for that, which I was very thankful for. Um, and that's out, we, we have to get three, um, at least three, and so we've sent it out to um, um, engineering firms, and I think I made the deadline a week from next, this coming Friday, uh, July 24th, I think something like that is the deadline. Um, so we're, we're working on that, and also Paul is helping write up some specifications for the drainage work at the upper Little League fields at Baldwin School. So he's going to write those up, we'll get those out and get uh, some quotes on, on that project. So we're moving ahead with those items. The only other thing with the field committee is um, we, I think I maybe mentioned this last meeting, we approached the Board of uh, Education to request a, a second turf field in the high school project. They approved it, and then it went to the state, the building committee for the high school project. They also approved it contingent on money being available after the demolition of the current high school, which I believe they're starting like about now. This week, I think they're gonna start. Um, so uh, it, it was good news for us that we can go with another synthetic turf field, which helps us a lot with maintenance, you know, staff and so on. And, um, and the youth sports groups have asked for that too, so there's support for that. Town Green Committee. Uh, the only thing new, they, they have a meeting this week, which I'll, I'll miss because I'm on vacation this week. But um, they are talking about a uh, a uh, east-west sidewalk on the north end of the green, kind of like this down on the south end on uh, 
Boston Street. There'll be one on the Broad Street end, but it's not going to be adjacent to the road like like on the Boston Street side because there are too many trees there. It'll be in about 20 feet probably. But um, the Green Committee had suggested putting that in. They're paying for it. Uh, they got a um, sizable donation from the 375th Committee. There was money left over, and so most of the funding for that sidewalk is coming from from that committee and uh jim portley's working on that with them getting some quotes and costs to do it okay, that'll make it more convenient for those who take the bus into the right. city too right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it stops there now but it's, it would make it even more convenient yeah yeah but just you know one other area we have to remove snow from in the winter but it's i mean that's not going to add a lot to our workload yeah. there Okay. Item nine, unfinished business, uh, the community center security program. Uh, we uh, went to the board of selectmen uh, last week, and they approved. Uh, we had three, uh, four quotes, uh, three quotes. I'm sorry, three different quotes, and they approved Strategic Security Incorporated. They're the same company that did the just recently did the fire, the police department, put in a new security cameras there. Same company. They were the low low uh, quote. Uh, I don't have the exact number. It was around twelve thousand mm -hmm. um, dollars, and they um, it's twelve thousand sixty five dollars is what it was. Um, and um, they, uh, Pam Millman is now working up the contract that she has to make with them, and then the anticipation is it will be done by the end of July. Wow. Mm -hmm. You mean the contract? The, 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 the system will be installed by the end of July. Really? Oh, okay. It'll only take Great. about two days, three days to do it. Okay. okay. Yeah. Great. Okay. Uh, 9B, Dog Park. Okay, so um, where we are with that in, is, uh, quite frankly, to answer the, the questions that the uh, folks had, none of us have made a decision where it's going to go. We're looking at a lot of different options. The process, though, would be this. There was a wetland study done of that one area that we had looked at that you folks are aware of. Um, the wetland study uh, in the uh, A2T2 survey. Nothing's been posted or done with that. We haven't, the commission hasn't decided that's where we want this to go yet. We have that in the event that's where we go. But if, if that's where it ends up being, there'll be a um, planning zoning, so it'll be a public hearing with planning zoning. The decision is not made by the commission. We decide that if that's where we, the commission decides they would like it to go, the final decision rests with planning and zoning in inland wetlands. Inland wetlands may say there, there are too many wetlands in here. It's not going to work here because there is a wetlands map that. Um, Again, it has not been accepted by the uh, Wetlands Commission yet because it hasn't been presented to them because we're not presenting something. We don't know if that's where, where we're going to go with it. Um, but the process is, I believe it's maybe backwards. I think it's plenty in zoning first and then wetlands, or it's the other way around. I'm, I'm quite sure, not sure which way it goes. But wetlands, wetlands first, yeah. Wetlands first, then plenty in zoning. Um, and so. Um, <clears throat> But then we also had talked about, there's a consultant that I think there's some emails that we had gotten. And I think we were, and maybe we need to decide tonight if we want to have that consultant. If I remember, she was going to come for free for at least one visit, look at potential sites, make a recommendation that this is a good place, yeah. this is not a good place, here's why, here's why not. Um, and so, um, you know, I don't think, I don't know if we have exhausted all the potential sites yet, but of course we have looked at Binder Park, mm -hmm. uh, we looked at um, Peddler's Park. We talked about um, the stump dump and East River Preserve. We went East River Preserve, yeah, and uh, we were there. Were, we were told pretty much it wouldn't work there. Not Plains Park. Uh, not Plains. We talked about um, um, Rollwood Park, mm -hmm. Rollwood Park, but you know, right adjacent to the daycare center. And there's, there's, I believe, there are wetlands over there. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't actually walked that area. I know some of us talked about going there individually, but. Um, I think if we have the uh, consultant come, we look at some of these areas with the consultant, get input from her, what she thinks, you know, where the, would be optimal sites to do this, and then make a recommendation from there. Well, it's, it's Nut Plains Park, but also now the west side of Nut Plains, uh, of uh, uh, um, Peddler's Park. As you, as you go in the... Is that, did you check on that? We did. So, so the others, right. can I address the people? Well, in the address, address us. us. Address us. Address us. And I mean, is that available? Is it town property? It is town property. So the area we had talked about was adjacent to the parking lot. Another area at Peddler's we were just considering as another possible spot. Along Peddler's Road, 
So I don't, I don't know what direction it is, but if you're in the park lot and the kiosk is to the left, if you look straight ahead, Peddler's Road would be to the right. Kind of going west, kind of. We, that's or another southwest. spot we kind of yeah. talked about. It's relatively flat. Right. Um, it's farther away from the homes on Denison Road. Um, and um, I, you know, I'd say it's probably a, 100 yards away from maybe the nearest property line of, uh, of the nearest house there. Um, it's farther away from Denison Drive. Correct. Farther away from, did I say Denison or did I say Peddler's? Farther away from no, Denison, Denison Drive. You said Denison. Um, so that was another area at Peddler's that we looked at as a possible spot. It would eliminate the issue with the, the, um, the, the landfill. Right. Um, wetlands, there are no wetlands up there. I walked in with Kevin McGee just to look at it. Uh, he did, he had a map with him to c confirm that yes, it is town property, not land trust property. Mm -hmm. um, and so... Um, Kevin McGee is the environmental planner. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and and, um, and I'll, I will say that I, I know the dark, 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 the dog park committee is meeting tomorrow night because they're trying to get, uh, they, they broaden their committee to get more people involved in their committee. So they're having a meeting here tomorrow night at... Seven. Seven, is it? Okay. Um, yeah, and I'm not part of that. I, I won't be here. I'm on vacation anyway. Can, but, uh, can you kind of discuss what their, what their current role is? What are they doing? I think they want us to expand the size of the committee. Also talk about uh, options of um, Locations. location. Um, eventually look into fundraising. See if there are any uh, contractors who may, might be part of the group. Fundraising to do the build, right? To do the original yes, build? Yeah. yeah. Okay, and, and the maintenance part of it, I know that was one of the That would be part of their, they would look at as part of their responsibility too, to ma help maintain it mm -hmm. and, and have some kind of oversight of it. I think this commission all along said that this has got to be something that's not going to be Parks Rec staff maintaining. Yes. Mm -hmm. The volunteers have to take yeah. ownership of it. And the liability part of it, that would still be yeah. under Parks and Rec, under yeah. town, under would, the town. I would say town. probably yes. But as far as I'm concerned, any any committee, any ad hoc committee or any committee, committee of citizens has to be significant in terms of numbers. Correct. If it's I going agree. to be effective and it's going to work. Mm -hmm. and, and I think it's important to, to acknowledge this is not a committee of the Parks and Recreation staff or department or mm -hmm. commission. It's a volunteer group uh, just like Little League is a volunteer group. They have fields. We maintain the fields. We help them with the fields. This is uh, would be a volunteer group looking to uh, like the Hamden Dog Park. Yeah, it's a partnership with the Hamden of Parks and Recreation Department. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's right. But it's an ongoing committee. Ongoing. You're right. Uh, although I'm going off the commission, I, I would like to put um, for the record we are uh, entirely transparent. We are not trying to hide anything, but we understand you're opposed to it. We experienced that before when we try to do things to our parks that um, neighbors may feel is not in their best interest, but we never ever keep things a secret. If we're on camera, we, um, we publish our minutes, albeit sometimes with errors. Um, but it's not an intentional thing, so be assured that we know what all your questions are because we, several of us took very careful notes the last time uh, we met with you and we will be ready to answer them, but we're still in the exploring stage. Can you clarify one point? Did the committee also, did you previously recommend Peddler's Park as a location for this dog park? Did, sorry? Was, I thought the committee already recommended Peddler's Park as a location for this dog park. I don't believe we recommended no, anything. We have discussed any at all. places. We have not oh, sat mean, down and said in the beginning, yes. in the very beginning. Yeah, I, have, I think the truthful answer would be really? yes. I think we did because I think that Peddlers was a park that was currently not being used, even though it is one of our parks. You know, we could easily go over there and put in picnic tables and and cookers and like a chapman. Island, but we but we thought because it isn't used and because the the pile of turf from the high school is going down, it could be used and it's not a good thing for a park and rec commission to let potential parks lay fallow and not make them available to the residents. So it seemed when we were starting to think about a dog park that maybe the the currently unused park would be a good location. So the answer to the honest answer is, is yes, I believe we did think that would be a good location. We hear you though, um, and we have been looking at other locations and be assured that we will let you know through our formal processes so what those are. So we're just making a connection between, honestly, we're just making a connection if that was said in a previous meeting, does this 
does the group who's meeting tomorrow night, do they think this is a go for them? So they're no. mobilizing. No, no, no. They're, asking, no. They're, asking, they're asking people on social media right now, today, to mobilize for digging and weeding. And they have a Facebook Mr. Coyne, we want them to organize. Yeah. I just, I'm trying, I mean, I'm seeing there's a connection between the previous recommendation and these people would like to mobilize no. to no. clean up. They're just no. preparing for when there not is a park pack. that's available that has been yeah. uh, narrowed down to go before a board that they would be ready to move forward and try and she get themselves not said organized. that it's going there. No. 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 no, no, I think they're looking for volunteers or wherever it ends up going that will help, exactly. you know, help create it and, and maintain it. For example, at the Bittner location, there would be tree removal, so they would want um, to look for resources to help with that. And on the west side of Peddlers is all treed mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Any dog park would not be without trees. No, the idea is to have some Peddlers shade for them. Completely forested. It's hardly well, that's not. We'll, yeah. I think we should we digress. Yeah. Yeah. But we have to look some more at that, too. We have to. We digress. So we need to the bottom line is, I guess the bottom line is we don't have a definite yeah. park. We're still investigating no, yeah. and yeah. I'd say this is very much in its infancy. There's right. no yeah. definitive decisions made so, yet. So Look at it all options. I move uh, that we um, invite the dog park um, professional yeah. uh, who's volunteered yeah. to come and talk with us and, and look at some of our sites and give us some advice that we invite that person sooner rather than later. Agreed. I'll second that. All in favor of Barbara's motion? Aye. 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 Motion carries. But yeah, I think implicit that it would would direct you to contact that person, Rick, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and set up a time that's uh, suitable for her and for us. Okay. In August, the, the August meeting might be a little soon because the August meeting will be uh, the yeah, third. Yeah, this one's later. Yeah, just three weeks from now, right? Yeah, so I'd say September at the soon. Well, you never know. You never well, know. You never yeah. know. Try and say. Well, people are on vacation. Look, yeah. People are on vacation. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I'll uh, get hold of her next week. And uh, that'll be in the minutes, just, just so you see it. You know. Next one. More dogs. Right <laughs> yes, H.C. It's, it's proposed it's ordinance. It's passed. It's passed. It's all passed. But now it, it is an ordinance, and it will be effective uh, July 24th, 2015. And and Barbara, uh, I think you've been an advocate of the. Uh, uh, I hate to say dogs on the beach because they're not beaches anymore. They're not. They're, they're sandy areas. Sandy areas. Sand 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 <laughs> they're, they're not beaches. <laughs> oh, it's great. Enough. <laughs> Jacob's Beach is a beach, and uh, Quanapog is a beach. A swimming beach. A swimming beach. beach. Swimming swimming beach. beach. Yeah. yeah. I think it's very useful that, that the town agreed to go and be in, in concert with the state, um, the public health department, in terms of defining what a swimming beach is. And so that's what the ordinance does. It identifies our swimming beaches, and it, it, it's, it lines itself with um, what a swimming beach is. And we have two of them. And we attended the public hearing. Uh, I think Barbara, <clears throat> Barbara led off the list of witnesses at the public hearing, followed by uh, several folks from the Indian Cove area, including the president of the Indian Cove Association. And, and not speaking was uh, Mrs. Uh, oh, goodness, Mrs. Reardon, who lives on um, Mulberry Point Road, and uh, she's like a someone who's taken an, uh, on an unofficial capacity of, of monitoring and checking out things. She's been very, very, very helpful in that process. Um, the uh, the board of selectmen at that meeting. They voted to pass the ordinance, and it was a roll call vote, and there were three members uh, in favor, one against, and one abstaining. Uh, one not present. So it's three, one, uh, and uh, not present. Uh, 
I have to admit the dogs didn't wait till the 24th of July. <laughs> they were on the beach. They're out there already. They're are alive. They? They're there. <laughs> Okay. And it, well, it, and, and it received uh, it received the support of the first selectman uh, of uh, Carl Bell Stracy, a selectman, Charles Havner, a selectman, and it was opposed by uh, uh, Gary McElwainy, uh one of the select persons. And at one point, uh, uh, Mr. McElwainy tried to. Uh, in effect, uh, opposed the motion by uh, limiting it to one area, but the motion didn't get a second, so they went on and they adopted the main motion. Can you ask what the ordinance is? What, what is the ordinance? Yeah. Four. Dogs. Dogs are allowed in non swimming beaches. Oh. And the only two swimming beaches Guilford has is Jacobs and Quinnipiac. Thank you. Before that, there was an attempt to um, rule against dogs on any shorefront area, um, which are, there are many, we have six at least that are town-owned property where dog owners take their dogs and they still have to be on leash. That ordinance didn't change that, but the owners still have to pick up their dog's waste. Um, but it would have, if, if we've gone forward with the way it was up being um, um, or implemented, uh, people wouldn't have been able to go down to Chapman Island with their dog on a leash and walk around or have a picnic or go down to Ch uh, Chittenden and walk along the shorefront um, or Grass Island. So we felt that that was, you know, that needed to be changed and clarified. Can, can we go back to, are we done with uh, C? I'd like to go back to B just for a second and I can understand where there's some confusion. I just went on the Guilford Dog Park um, Facebook page and in their header they say we are exploring the possibility of a dog park in town at Peddler's Park, an unused parcel owned by the town. So I think that needs to come off yeah. their page. <clears throat> well, who's from the commission is going to that meeting tomorrow? Anybody have time? Mm -mm. I, I might be able to go. I, I told you previously I couldn't go, but I, I might go now. So could you make that clear at the beginning of the meeting, Jack, that, that um, where, where we as a commission stand with respect to the location, sure. potential dog park? Yeah, yeah, because I made it clear to them. We, there was no decision made where this was. I think it was clear at our last meeting. Yeah, I think this is where there's some confusion and maybe some questions about our transparency. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. So I think it just needs to be clarified. It's two different places. <clears throat> I think they just didn't update there what they were about from when they right. developed the group because their um, Nothing so July true. 2nd, their notification does yeah. say Parks and Rec are still exploring options. So I just think they didn't yeah. get right, an oversight. description. Yeah, it's an oversight just like our oversight. So. But it is, you know, yeah. Um, but it, works, it makes, uh, it warrants noting yes. to yeah. update so that they're in sync with what is going on. So, so back, up, back on 9C, are we <coughs> finished with the, the ordinance? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yes. yep. Uh, 9D, uh, the transportation grant. So so apparently yes, we, we have gotten we that. Finally, we finally got something in writing, which we've been asking for for a couple months. We yeah. have it. We're good. We're, we're moving forward. Time. <laughs> and it's looking good. Yes. All right. Yeah. And through the General Assembly, uh, survived the, uh, the, the trailer session, and it's, it's an act of, it's law for this year. Uh, 9E, uh, Community Center Betterment and Improvements. Okay, Barbara. Barbara and uh, Rose have well, the, um, what you have in the packet is a dra an early draft, and there's a, a, a better version. I did one. There's a new version. Um, thank you. Oh, thank you. You have it. Rose, yes. in the minutes that he never changed. No, he doesn't have the right one. I don't oh, think I have. I'm sorry. He doesn't have. You're right. Yep. Yeah, we made a few little changes, nothing major, but... All I have is the draft right here. Okay. It says draft at the top, too. The draft says one, then? Yes. Okay. I think you're giving one here, Rick. This is the best one. It's the gold one. Okay. Jeff, you have one? Yeah. First person to get one. This is the new draft? Yes. The new draft. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. No. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, well, Rose and I um, spent a couple of hours um, reviewing, go, walking around room by room to see what was um, what the situation was. To, let me preface it by the fact that um, we are, as a commission and the department, stewards of this building because this is where we're housed. Oh, okay. um, so it's our responsibility to make sure we have the funds, the staff, and, and the direction to make it look as good as it can look. It's a town building. Mm -hmm. We recognize that the town building is used extensively. Somebody said, I think it was Anthony, our custodian, something like 100 hours a week or more mm -hmm. um, where the, the, um, the center is, is in use somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, and we also want to emphasize that our remarks have nothing to do with Anthony being hiding out in the back room <laughs> um, because he's very hard working. But just to keep the place going, to get to keep the, the you know the day-to-day -day cleaning, the, the restrooms, mm -hmm. uh, all of that. These are kinds of things that need doing that Anthony can't do by himself. Mm -hmm. And so we're not at all um, suggesting that. We, earlier there, when I first came on the commission, I did a similar report and um, suggested uh, that, uh, that there be outsourcing of some of these cleaning and painting responsibilities mm -hmm. because our current one person staff can't do it. Can't do it. Um, well, now where we are is that just every room in this building and all the hallways need to be painted. Mm. The trim needs painting. Everything looks shabby. Now I know if you're here every day, if you're a staff person and you work, you don't notice it. And you may not have a few Martha Stewart jeans, but <laughs> the fact is that the whole place needs solid painting. There are even places where the walls have been hit by various things, they carriages and carriage stuff. <laughs> um, right. Yeah. that they need actually something called tri-guard on the corners where there's a lot of wear you should just really paint it and then put those tri-guards on um, so the trim needs painting the rugs if you take a look around mm. we were we were I mean the worst one is in the pool room mm. it's really awful but it's dirty I mean people can't help it they come and they watch their kids do the, the sports and they have their dinner and they spill their coffee or people come to meetings um, we really need to be on top of the cleaning of the rugs, for example. Once a year, it doesn't cut it. If you have home, rugs at home and you wear your shoes in the house, you know you probably have to do it every yep. six months. We probably should be doing it here every three months. We actually we? have budgeted for twice next year. Twice, every okay. Other twice. Okay, yeah. because once you let the, the stain sit, right. then you can't get them out, and then you have to re replace the rug, which is far more expensive. Yep. So we've kind of detailed all the things we found and what we think needs to happen. I know it's sort of overwhelming. Um, and we also, besides our going around and doing this inventory, we met with um, Tony and um, Anthony, rather sorry, maybe you prefer Anthony, and, and um, Terry, and walked around room to room and heard what they thought about things. And we spent a couple of hours doing that. Uh, so I think what we recommend is that somebody that the commission direct the staff, namely through Rick, mm -hmm. to get these things done, to put them in the budget, and to get the things done. Uh, one of the biggest um, problems is storage, right, Rose? There, there's a group of particularly senior citizens who are into crafts and have taken over every possible cupboard mm -hmm. <laughs> in the place and, and don't seem to want to or be able to weed out. And Terry is particularly sensitive about her being the one to tell them that they need to do it. But the fact is we have classes going on here that have no place to put their, their items, their paints, their yeah, um, yeah. There's a kids group that meets in Quantico. They have no, you know, they, they have this much on a shelf. Mm -hmm. uh, the painting instructor has to have her stuff in a bin in the in the room in the Quantico room. Mm -hmm. and, you know, that's just not on. No. And there's a huge closet in that room that could be repurposed if we were to um, keep the crafts collection mm -hmm. to a minimum. Yeah. Um, so what I think we would like is for someone from the commission designated to work with Rick to see that these things are scheduled. Um, okay. You're right. I, I think I think Barbara. I, I think we could have a, a maybe a timed phase in or implementation plan because some things can be done mm. now yes. that don't require any. Budget, we've you know, we've plans. actually talked with Anthony about this. He's already of, started doing some of those. Get rid of plants or 
Yeah. 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 Read yeah. out some books yeah. unless yes. yeah. they, they, they can be given to the library. And I yes. told the well, lawyer yeah, that he's already started working on some things. I've got okay. contacted the uh, Neighbors Music School about removing this. Yes. That's theirs. So we've already, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. But they're chipping away. But the, but the other thing away. that is going to have, to have to happen is that some to paint, you'd have to yeah, shut the building. And right. so there'd have to be a place on the schedule where the days were blocked off. Mm -hmm. um, so are you guys like thinking, OK, so I look at it this way because I think of it as a spreadsheet. Yeah. You've got the stuff that we can do without hiring yes. out. And, whatever. Yes. and then you've got stuff that you maybe need to hire, like a general contractor yes. to do or something. The exactly. painting and you know the, the tile replacement right. and the whatever. OK. Yeah, that's what All one right. of us would do in conjunction with Rick. Yeah. Yes, and exactly. I said I would continue to do that. Because you were here when this building was first built. Yes, I was. You know, <laughs> not, not the date you were in like that. <laughs> I was yes, I was. Yes, okay. I, I, I was on the commission. That's the way to go that, forward is means. to have someone on the commission yeah. work with Rick to get the schedule I'll, going. And okay. I'll work with Rick and Anthony and, and Terry and we will... You guys did a great job because when you look this. at this list, this is a lot of time and effort on your part and also the staff that was able to do it with you. Right. And it's it's no different than when you're at home. You want your home to be used and enjoyed and comfortable and have people feel welcome, but you have to look at your honey-do list on the weekend right. and keep chipping at it. So it sounds like we're in a good position to have a plan in place, which we've talked right. about doing. So thank you for right. doing that. So, Kathy, you want to include that in the minutes? Rick in conjunction with uh, Rose and Anthony or whoever Rick uh, designates. Combination of. We develop an implementation plan for the, for the various aspects of this. And, and then, yeah, some of the stuff the facilities department I think should be able to help us with. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In, in town. It's a facility, just like town halls, they take care of right. that. Yeah. And it's beautiful. There's not a spot on the road over town yeah. halls. <laughs> of course, they don't get the use we get. But. No. <laughs> well, what does this mean? To toss a pile of eyeglasses. Oh, down in the hallway. Go look in the hallway. There's eyeglasses. I need a. Well, go look. Maybe we'll find some of the flip. Those are the little things that can be done right away. Yeah. Well, okay. So I just want to know what it is. Like on our way up. It's a night. It's a night. Anthony takes great pride in the building. He does. He does. very. He does. Uh, welcoming the, 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 you know, the push to improve. And like you said, it's no reflection on anyone no. that no. It, it's like this. It's just, it's time for us to review. It's just time. We've talked yes. about it, so it's, we're doing it. Are some good. of the things that, like the box or bag of glasses, are, are there places to donate those yes. instead of just tossing yes. them? Lions okay. Club, maybe, right? Well, that's, yeah, this, this was one of the drop off for the Lions Club. Yeah. I, oh, I, I think they have been here for a while. Oh, so yeah. I just need yeah. to make yeah. sure we'll they get them. Yes. I think they ended up in cabinets. <laughs> where? where? <laughs> the cabinets. cabinets. Oh. But you're right. We can't leach into every room with one area. We right. have yeah. to contain it so that everybody right. has the opportunity to use their bill, their room the right. way they need that's to. Right. They shouldn't be storing their stuff that should be in that room to accommodate stuff that's in the room that shouldn't be there. Right. So like I think that will. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think we didn't put this in the report, but actually um, we, we found some things from classes that went back to like there should be an annual kind of like purge clean up purge mm -hmm. you know we all know you have to do that at home well for the staff this is their home and, and needs to happen yeah, they show me some old old record out al record albums that yeah i think maybe it's time to find somebody yeah. else who might want that mm -hmm. find a home <laughs> okay thanks. i know somebody who would love that good job thank you very much yeah thank you come yeah. <laughs> I will. any other comments yeah, thank you no all good yeah. I have proposed the name of the Guilford High School baseball field. I haven't heard any. Uh, uh, John Scalzi is working on that. Yeah. Yeah, probably just on hold for now. Okay. But they, if when they take that up, they mean the Board of Education, then they'll be back to us. And then we have to do some more work there. We will. It's not just a submission of the letter that John so nicely wrote. Mm -mm. We have to substantiate and document it as well. Yeah, I don't know where that is. John was working on that The board has a committee for that very purpose. Mm -hmm. Just like we have a committee for uh, naming fields. Which we have in place. Yes, exactly. Oh. Okay, uh, 9F, uh, excuse me, uh, 9G, uh, the Coast Guard ordinance, which... Yeah, I think I just handed these out many uh, of today. Many have read about it in the paper and seen it on, on television, but... So... I like section 
So the, did you, you, I think you all know the current ordinance uh, does not, it forbids any kind of flotation device at, at all, even Coast Guard approved That's right. uh, mm -hmm. devices. That was an ordinance uh, going back to 1994. Um, and so since this issue was raised and brought to my attention uh, by um, somebody in the community, uh, I spoke with our insurance company. Um, we, we researched it with the Red Cross, Coast Guard, and the insurance company recommended, they got back to me and recommended that we, yes, we probably should allow Coast Guard approved PFTs, personal flotation devices. However, the caveat is, and this is the information I think we talked about maybe the last meeting I gave to uh, our attorney, Pam Millman, is that the responsibility has to be with the parents. Mm -hmm. We don't want to add another layer of burden on the part of our lifeguards to have to now verify their Coast Guard approved life jackets. If a parent brings a child with a life jacket, they have to assume the responsibility that it's approved and it's the right size. You can't put an infant in right. something that's for an adult. There's, you know, obviously it's, well, it's so the parent's different. responsibility, but it's also their liability too. Responsibility and liability, and um, I think she might include the wording here. But I had suggested that we also put in here that the parent must stay at the water with their child. Mm -hmm. They can't put them in. Figure, well, my kid's okay now. I'm going to go read a book and they're sun myself. They have to be there with the child if the child has a life jacket on. Mm -hmm. Is we, that not, again, it's not in here? Well, I think it's a little bit softer. Um, where did I see something? Uh, I saw it. It so, says so that. So it's right. the parent of a minor and the user insured PFT is a Coast Guard approved. PFTs are not a substitute for swim lessons and parent and parental adult supervision. Oh, okay. It's worded a little differently, but I, I mean, do you think that's getting their point across right? No, I think no. they should be in the water no. with the kids. It's easy to sit back as a, as a parent and I think the word supervision can be interpreted in different ways. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, and supervision, if you want them in the water, it needs to be specific. I think that's what we want. We want the parents to be at the water, in the water with the child. That is you have young kids, what do you think? Oh, I would, my kids wouldn't be down by the water without me anyways, whether they had a flotation device on yeah. or not. Yeah. Yeah. No, so. this, this doesn't work. It doesn't. Right. When you read this, you don't no. automatically no. realize that. I think that means I can go sit on my beach and you're an eye shot away. from the other end yeah. of the beach. Yeah. 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 I think well, supervised well, is to too broad of a term. Yeah, I mean, I, I think would it stay needs specific. Yeah. Then you can't go wrong. So we maybe strike that last. Children wearing um, uh, Coast Guard approved PFDs must be in the water with a parent, accompanied by a parent. Parental slash adult. At all times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. a, 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 right, a parent or adult. Yeah, the way, well, the way, the cons yeah. well, for consistency's sake, it's parental slash adult. Yeah. yeah. Say it. So how did you want it, word that, Mark? Uh, whatever we agree children on, make sure we get it to. Children wearing. Coast Guard approved PFDs who are in the water must be accompanied by, because accompanied is very different from supervised. Yeah. A parent, a, a, a it's parent parental slash, adult. slash adult. Okay, so now I'm going to complicate this a little more. Okay, go, Ruth. <laughs> what constitute a child? Because mm. the way this reads, an adult can put one yeah. on the dollar. Yeah, well, and so that's where true. Do we so the line? I think that the parent slash adult needs to have super, someone else supervising them in the water. Because if I have a special needs adult child, I mean, it's an adult child, um, I have to be in the water with them. Anyone wearing okay. a Coast yeah. Guard PFD must be accompanied one, by you need another. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And Suzanne, in, in paragraph uh, two, it does talk about. Responsibility of the parent of a minor. I would say response. Oh gosh, I don't even know yeah. where this. Where the lawyer? Should be the sole <laughs> responsibility. Well, I think well, just make what, a note. What the lawyers yeah. can fix let's it. Let her fix it. Put, yeah. put, a, put a note in the margin that says what our goal is. To do the the goal is ideas. that anyone wearing a PFD that's approved has to be accompanied by someone when they're in the water. Yeah, by an adult. Parental, adult parental slash adult yeah. supervision. I think you could probably get rid of parental altogether and just do adult. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. You know? Right. Yeah, you're right. I think the lawyer needs to, if, if she knows what our message is and what our direction is to cover, then she can put in the correct wording. I mean, just so if I were in the water with a, a PSD, I wouldn't have to have an adult supervising me. Yes, you would, yes. because if you needed the PSD. If you need it, yeah. then you shouldn't have, you know. I think the whole goal is just because you're wearing this approved 
item doesn't mean that you should not have someone with you. Right. The whole point is the ra the fact you're wearing it means you, you need assistance. Have, you need assistance, yeah. mm -hmm. and therefore, if you need assistance, you need someone at your at the in the water with you, or take it off, or take it off. Because but if you imagine. are wearing it, that was the whole point. You don't want the wearing of that to take away anybody right. watching you. Mm -hmm. So if you're wearing it, you have to have somebody with you in the water. I mean, that really was the whole crux of why mm -hmm. that rule started to begin with. Mm -hmm. So we need. That hasn't changed just because we've approved that now you can wear them. There's still the point. And it hasn't taken away the supervision. It hasn't taken the supervision right. portion away. But well, Pam should know how to wear it, though. Yeah. Okay. I don't think it's our job to put the wording in. Our job is to get and in supposed to sync with the lawyer with our message and what our goal is to protect. Do, do we only want people wearing these um, life jackets who need them? In other words, mm -hmm. If I just wanted to go to Jacobs Beach and I, I came off my kayak and I wanted to go for a swim, I mean, you don't want me to have to have someone, you want me to take that off. You don't want me to be wearing it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, because I think, to, I think the want, whole goal yes. is, uh, no, I don't want to complicate things, but I mean, no, no but I yes. think the whole, you if our goal is to keep people yeah. safe, which is what it is, right. that's the whole reason this all is taking place, right. is to keep people safe. So why do we do so the water if, without a PFD? Does somebody have to be with me? No. 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 But no. I think the whole point was, if you're, w the whole, the, in the beginning, you, you, you weren't to wear it because you didn't want that to be a false sense of security right. for safety. Right. So that's how it got established that way. Now that we're incorporating the fact that you can wear the approved item, yes, it's keeping you safe, but it's not taking away the fact that you still need supervision because mm -hmm. that's the basis for being safe by the water. And if you're wearing something that is a device to give you assistance, you still need that person next to you. It may mean a kayaker has to take, take off, off their, right. but you're consistent. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Uh, I'm just trying to think, I don't know if this would ever be an occurrence, but if someone was a lap swimmer at Lake Quantum, I read that lap lane, let's say they're swimming a mile, and they wear one just, just they know how to swim, but they're wearing it just, in case they get exhausted at the end or what, I don't know. They don't wear it They're now. probably not going to have a, uh, no, no, I just, so why I just want to make sure we don't create something as another problem. Another problem, yeah. yeah. Yeah, right. Is I think the issue is it's for non-swimmers, obviously, and that's, that's why they would, they would wear them. Um, <laughs> And in most cases, it would be a, you know, I think a, a very child. young child. Well, what about this? What about or running somebody disabled? This, discussing with Pam, our town council, what our concerns are and, and how we're trying to mm -hmm. enable everyone to be safe. Yeah. And not create and, problems. And not create a problem, right. but our, our goal is to keep everyone safe and to do the right, right. thing in order to yeah. keep people safe yeah. in the water. But I think the main point is we want her to specify that that if, if somebody's required, needs to have a... They also again, need supervision. They need adult, they need adult supervision in the water. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Okay. Not supervision. They need adult, adult a company. Well, company. company. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's a company that, that's good. Accompaniment? Yeah, I like, I like that, that. I like yeah. it. So, the Are supervision they also keep it changing 9, 10, yeah. 12, yeah. and 16? I think she's just trying to clean up the language in these. Yeah. Um, really? 9, that's obvious. I, I think that, yeah. um, that number 10 is problematic because people think Jacob's Beach is the whole thing, and we think now that Jacob's Beach is Jacob's Beach Park. So you wouldn't want to object to someone on the far side of the parking lot throwing a frisbee. We have we have pickleball there. We have yeah. volleyball. We're talking the sandy area. I think she means the sandy area. And actually, oh, I think one day I was on the last week, and there were some kids that were just throwing a ball back and forth. They weren't near the they were near the parking lot, but right. on the beach, they were away from any people. But this I says in the beach, which connotates well, the sand. Right. But you could throw a frisbee in the. If the beach there. was crowded, the wouldn't the lifeguard water. say you can't do that? It's you know. I mean, it seems to me that this is a rule that just yeah. begs to be broken. It, it if there's no one else no. on the beach and you want to throw a ball, I mean, gee. Because years ago, we actually used to have the volleyball nets used to be on the beach at Jacobs yeah. Beach. Mm -hmm. right. You know, they used well, to beach be beach volleyball. There. Sure. Yeah, and so we moved them to the other area where they are now, but. Um, it was always at Lake Point open because it's so small. Yes. You can't yeah, throw you a frisbee exactly. against somebody. Um, I don't know if you want to, it's up to the commission if you want to include the Jacobs Beach. I would not include Jacobs Beach. Because there's too much other area. Well, unless you were, you're meaning in the water. 
or down by the water. I think so, we don't even mention so, Jacob's I mean, but it, hard, the way it, it's worded, I would, uh, it's fine. And Barbara said, I mean, the lifeguard, if it looks like right. it's inappropriate, the lifeguard right. can just step in at that point. So right now, it's a, the, the way it's written is, is just at Lake Quantum right. Jacob's yep. Beach. And it says on the beach. Don't they mean on the beach? Should be on the beach, yeah. yeah. Or in the water, it's either way, but um, they're yeah. not allowed there. Well, I think they meant to say in the beach area. I mean, mm -hmm. it's pretty much fenced off. There is nothing right. other than right. the beach area there. So maybe should we say on the beach or in the water at Lake Quantabon? To make it clear they can't be in the water having a catch? Well, yes. I mean, yeah, yes. the clearer it is, yes. it's easier to implement it when you know it's... it's. Okay. And so I think you, you're recommending we keep that uh, um, for Lake Quantabon only and not at Jacobs Beach as part of that? Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the red emergency funnels, they don't exist anymore, so she can uh, take that right out. The detergents. I mean, I would see that at the public swimming area, but, you know, I think that the other shorefront areas would be a little hard to, to, um, to monitor. Just like... But why not leave it there? Just... You never know. There's no harm in leaving it. There. It sounds like she's saying it was in a different section of the ordinance. And she's suggesting moving it to this section. Yeah. See where it says it was originally in 214-2E. Right. Well, I think I would, it, it, it I would leave it in because somebody could go down to something do their wash and use yeah. Tide. And, you know, I mean, I mean, you never know. I, yeah, it's so like all water. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when you desperate, you're desperate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So the next step uh, after you, you know, we commission votes on, on the wording here, it, it goes back to Pam, and then it has to go to, to Joe to put yes. on the, uh, the uh, Board of Selectmen agenda to uh, have a public hearing. So uh, this is going to go back to Pam while. now anyway to just yeah. work on, and mm -hmm. then it'll come back to us, and then it'll go back to If you to want Pam, to come back to us again, it's up to you, so then, I mean, yeah, it'll, it'll be a lot of support. And then public hearing would be in August sometime. Okay. This can all be done back. Well, she'd have to know that it has to be back to us for the meeting. Mm-hmm. Because our next meeting is soon. Because this one was late. Yeah, we're scheduled for August third. Mm -hmm. And the September meeting is going to be uh, uh, September fourteenth. Yeah, it, it ended up being a the first Monday change for this year. Each of them are done by the end of August. Okay, now. Phew. Didn't we already? You comfortable with that, Rick? Uh, yes, I'll, um, I'll get the wording better from Kathy. <laughs> and once I get that, I'll send it over to Pam. Okay. And, uh, and really, I mean, we, we put in that wording, but it really would be her expertise. The way she wants to. to but it's make sure she just, understands the intent is yeah, that people exactly. have to be at the water, not. Mm -hmm. A company, not supervised. Right, right. Or what our bottom That's line goal is. Issue. Yeah. Yeah. Safety. Nine H. And you have to help me with this one, Rick, because I can't read it. Oh, we've already done that. Yeah. That was the, the, the two new program we coordinators. Program. 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 Oh, okay. Lindsay and Andrew. Is that what it okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. New business? New business. Uh, request for boat racks at the Chaffin Island uh, Park. There's a gentleman who's um, spoken to me that he wanted to pay for a boat rack. He wanted to have one built at Chavage Island Park. And um, he would pay for it. And then he would like to have a rack there. Um, for permanent storage, like, or just for leaving it there when he. Uh, I think, like, what we have at Jacob's Beach, but have one at, at Chavage Island. So, like, a rental then? Yeah. And I, and I told him if we did this, you would still have to rent it. I mean, you can't. Yeah. Just be, say, oh, I want to build a bull rack, and then you know I can use it. I think there's some issues at Chaffin Island, though. It really is not a good launch area there. Uh -uh. Um, and you know we've heard from uh, some other folks who live near Chaffin who are concerned about erosion and and people launching their kayaks from yeah. from that area. I mean, they, I guess I, I have to admit I've launched my kayak from there, and it really isn't a good spot. The, the, <clears throat> if there is a spot, basically, it's if you park there and you go straight across the grass toward the river, mm -hmm. 
you can high tide you can probably get in there but it's very rocky mm -hmm. I mean I, I think I think there's a little liability because it's not even ground you have oh, to mm -hmm. walk over boulders rocks to get get to the water it's not like Jacobs where it's flat you can go right in mm -hmm. um, so I'd be a little concerned um, and I have to, you know, I think a number of years ago I, I was sec suggesting to the commission we might think about boat racks there, but now if you really look at it, I don't think it's a good place to launch. Mm -mm. Um, there'd be even less control of, you know, vandals and anything because it's a little bit more secluded than Jacobs is. Mm -hmm. The racks are yeah. very visible, neighbors can see them, I mean, they're yeah. very, very open and visible. Yeah, now that we don't have the Phragmites so. there anymore, they used to be kind of hidden, now mm -hmm. they are. Um, so I, I just don't know that Chaffinch is, is a great idea for a boat wreck at this oh, point. To that end, aren't there boats coming in and out there too? From yes. The two, two or three yeah. boat yards? I mean, yeah. It's the Yacht Club, yeah. Browns, yeah. and there's It's a busy area. waterway there. It is, yeah. yeah. It's not... Yeah, well, I mean, why, um, why couldn't you launch a kayak? Why couldn't you launch a kayak down, in, you know, when you pull into the parking lot, and then there's a road that goes down here like right that, there? and it goes down to a sandy area. Why wouldn't that be someplace you could launch a kayak? Well, there's that kind of marshy area you have to walk through, though, right? There, uh, mm -hmm. and you know, you were like with the shell fishing yeah, on that yeah. side, it's flatter, to, but, but it's a bit getting in there. You know, you, there's a marshy area. Why don't we um, have a little group? Oh, I won't be here, but why don't, doesn't the commission have a little group of two or three Take people to just go down to Chaffinch and have a look and mm -hmm. see? Mm -hmm. Because I do agree that would be it's a beautiful area to kayak mm -hmm. and, and kayaking up the river is really nice. And it's not our liability if something, ha I mean, I don't want that to happen, obviously, none of us does, but um, if someone, if, if there's vandalism, it's, I, I see it as a concern, but it, yeah. it's not our liability Correct. if someone's boat right. got damaged, right? right? Correct. I, I'm a little I, I more concerned about if they launch all over those boulders, there, there mm -hmm. might be some liability in our parks. We're saying, come on and bring your kayak here, but we're not giving them real great access to the water there. Right. What you're talking about is better access, okay. but I'm pretty sure it's kind of marshy in there. I don't know, it's kind of mucky. I don't know if we could get in there with it unless we create some kind of boardwalk or something. Well, could a couple of commissioners do wetlands? I know the area you're talking about. What about yeah. wetlands? So what, that That's would what be their call, wouldn't wetlands it? Wetlands yeah. be their decision? Mm -hmm. But we could take a walk down to yeah. get it. It mm -hmm. would probably work. Okay. Just so we can say we looked and we don't think it's appropriate, or we looked, but it, it would it might go here, or you know. I mean, then at some point, maybe we should think about um, Chittenden Park, mm -hmm. Chittenden, you know, which yeah. is right on the other Easy. side of the yes. river. Same right. access, really, but yes. better. Right. Right. Getting to it the first time is hard because it's a long way to get there, unless they kayak to it. But if we sometime in the future, if there was a place we could put some racks over there, mm -hmm. low tide again, just you can't you can't do it. It's, you right. can walk it through the well. muck to get in there, but. You know, mid tide, high tide, it's, it's a pretty good spot. Well, it's a good future consideration. I think. Yeah. I think what we we really have to look back and say, wow, you know, when, when I first came on the commission, I think we had one boat rack at Jacobs we had, Beach. Well, we had 50 spots total, and now we have 237. And, wow. and every yeah. time we build another one, they come. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Um, so, Absolutely. you know, it's a very popular um, yeah. recreational yeah. activity, yeah. and I think to keep up with the times, we should be looking at other possible places where we could facilitate mm -hmm. that. Okay. I'll, I'll get back to this individual and let them know that we, we're, we're going to look at it. Yeah. That challenge is a spot. We're always looking. Ten yeah. feet. I, I think this is something we really better. probably think about more for next year because the beach pass is already yeah. done. But but there was a veteran who just called me one day and asked, do you have any discount yeah. on beach passes for veterans? Said, well, you know, it's a good question. We, we don't. Mm -hmm. uh, it's something the commission would have to decide on. Um, we're kind of more than halfway through the, he just admitted it, but we're more than halfway through the summer now, uh, through the season. <laughs> um, uh, I think we should put it under our budget making process for consideration. When we're, yeah, when we're not totally when we start talking about the budget. Stuff. Okay. Right. Also, to look at a, a committee in town established by the General Assembly about a year or so ago to specific, specifically advocate for and, and monitor veterans affairs and programs. Mm -hmm. And the one here is jointly uh, held by uh, Madison and Guilford. Okay. In fact, the man who works downstairs. Well, head, yeah, I'm sure they yeah. yeah, yeah. And I say that as a, a, a veteran, but I would, I would qualify under senior systems anyway. So I just want to disclose my interest. <laughs> <laughs> but it wouldn't matter for me. That's a quick question. How's the uh, 
taco truck doing down at the beach? You're not down there. Has been going there very much. He's oh, not really not been no. going there very much. No, he's um, always on the green. He's on the green, and I think he, he probably he can do better on the green than at the beach. Um, oh wow! I think next year we're going to relook at that a little bit, and because I've been asked by others, can you can't you make him? go to the beach. I said, well, I can't tell him he has to be there. We just tell him when he can't be there. Right. We said, you can't be there before 3 o'clock. But you could put it in something that, that if he isn't there X number of days a week, that he loses his, his yeah, because exclusive he's right. From because yeah. else. what he's doing is keeping the spot. Right. I mean, he paid for it, sure enough. Right. But we, we aren't getting what we wanted, which right. was a food truck at the beach. Mm -hmm. Right. And so we have to guard our right to have that. And believe me, I've spoken to him over and over again. I said, I need you to be at the beach. Mm -hmm. And he said, I got a business, you know, because I know a couple of days been a couple of days early in the season he went down there, and he, you know he showed like three tacos or something. So I mean, I, I get it from a business him. perspective, but I think that we uh, and it's okay need for him to park on the green. Or along the way, nobody's being complaints. Well, he, I, I was imagining he's not supposed to park on Boston Street because that's state-owned. That's where he's been parking. Right. Yeah. So he needs to move his truck to town property, not state. So he can't be on Whitfield and he can't be on Boston Street. It's what well, I was told. He can't park on Boston Street. It is a police issue. Yeah. Because yeah. It's, it's diagonal parking. It is in parallel yeah. right. parking. Have, have we and had anybody else? The truck's else? Out into the road. Yeah. Have we had anybody else that wants to be down at the beach? Well, when we were doing this, he's the only one who had a permit. And so, just same thing with the ice cream vendor. Every year, I'd go to the police department. Who's got a permit? And in the past, there used to be two or three ice cream vendors. I say, okay, who's? It was kind of like a bid in a way. Whoever was willing to pay the most, you know, for the exclusive privilege of sell down there, it's who got it. Yeah. But the last five years, uh, there's only been one ice cream vendor. Um, he was the only food vendor at the time. I, there may be some more now. I don't know. I could I could check. I guess, but. Um, um, you know, he told me he's going to honor his commitment to pay the fee, even though he's not not down there. Uh, but even with that, we had him for the summer sizzler, and he sold a lot of tacos. He was at the um, fireworks. Picnic. Um, you know. Um, Didn't he come to the picnic too? Well, he was on the green, but but we also had the. Uh, oh, that's another. I, I got to ask for a new business, but the hockey club was there. Uh, okay. They asked if they could come, and, and to me, it was like the Lions Club doing it. It was a volunteer sure. group. It was money that benefits the kids, so I, I told him yes. Well, um, paying the fee is necessary, but it's not sufficient in, in the broader scope of things. It doesn't. To go to Barbara's right. point. It's not meeting the need. It, right. 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 It, yeah. So maybe next but year I, what we should do is incorporate some kind of... It'd be a requirement. That, you know, if you're going to make the commitment, you got to be there. Sounds yeah. like you can't enforce it, though. If he pays the fee, well, he, he can go park wherever he wants. Yeah. See, Rick was wise to have it a, on a year-to-year -year basis. Right. Mm -hmm. So whatever right. obligations we have and he has end at the end of this season. So we could start a new next year. Yeah. Or maybe the marketplace might help determine that as well. If other food trucks want to be involved. Right. Why do we have to have an exclusive? If we want food trucks to go there, we don't. If, we, if we let the market work the way it would work on sunny days, um, other vendors might want to go there. Um, as long as we didn't have them driving over kids at the beach, you know, I mean, they, they'd have to have a certain place. There'd be two parking spots, first certain come, time. first serve. Um, a certain time that they could go, and the first the first truck to get there gets the spot. And and we're not. I mean, we don't get the thousand dollars or whatever. Did you probably do that because there was like multiple ice cream ice cream trucks showing up there or with that? In, in the past years, that had happened, and then you know got arguments, and oh, uh, yeah. you know yeah, so we, we said we got one person we're letting in, and, and that's it. And they paid you know a fairly good amount of money for that exclusive. They know, they know nobody else can go in there. Well, that's an the ice cream truck is good. They're there. She's there every day. And we're gonna face know. that that issue or opportunity in the future due to the popularity of the food trucks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Have we thought about putting in our own concession stand there? Oh. We, well, we talked or about it in the it master it? plan originally, and I think that, okay. you know, the cost and everything was taken out. Yeah. But, I mean, that's something Alan suggested. What if we just hire a couple staff in the summer and we put a grill on there and they, they cook hamburgers mm -hmm. or hot dogs or whatever? So and we could do that. We've got to make sure we get the health department approval for right. all that. I mean, the, the food trucks, they got the liability, they have the insurance. And, it's not on us. You know, have, people, have we had any feedback from people using the beach that wish there were food trucks down there when he's not there? So I mean, are people just bringing their so own food? Yeah. <laughs> but are people just bringing their own food and really don't care? I mean, so that's another thing there's this consider. Facebook group <laughs> that, that Claire and I have seen. They, they can be a little harsh, but there, there have been multiple posts about the lack of food at the beach okay. and all the suggestions oh. of different towns 
um, in different states, what was available at these be mm -hmm. um, beaches, et cetera. So there has been feedback. That's an opportunity for us to look yeah. at okay. so, uh, You know, if this, if this group wants me to just find out from the police department or someone else who has a permit, I'll, I'll find out. And, um, you know, I can say to this guy, look, you know, pay half the fee because he had to pay a first amount by July 1st, which yeah. I don't think we got yet, but maybe we wait until the fireworks. Um, that maybe, I, you know, just say, look, you're not there. I got someone else going to be down there. We'll, we'll, you know, you don't have to pay the second half or something and get somebody else. But he said he was willing. To, he said I'll pay the full amount, but uh, I'm not making well, money. Maybe he would. Maybe this would be for this year. He has two trucks. He has two trucks. If I'm not mistaken. Right. Well, what one's in Madison, Madison and one's here. Yeah. 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 I heard and you bought a third. Good. So we sell a truck of somewhere then. Good. Well, so what is your, your desire? Want me to see if I can get somebody else? Want to yeah, stay well, with him for first of all, maybe well, he's willing to pay the whole thing since he owes us, right. not going all this time. He's not, he's not gone there for a month to the beach. He's, he's been there, but it, sporadically. Okay. He, there are some nights he's been down there, because I, 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 I go down there, I see him there, and, but it's sporadic. It's not, I can't tell you he's even five days a week. It might be three days. I, I don't know, but it's, it's sporadic. Can I ask well, we'll he could, to him? Maybe he would give up his exclusive right if you found someone else who would be willing to go again sporadically uh, who was permitted. Yeah. Okay. And so I can assume to be there all day on the weekends, right? You can go any time in the weekends, um, and, and again, I, I said to him that I think if you establish a presence here, people are going to know you're here. They're going to come right. down here. Mm -hmm. Five o'clock, people will come down and say, oh, hey, I'll, I'll go down and get a taco, sit mm -hmm. on the beach. And, mm -hmm. I mean, it, I think you'll draw some people. But don't you know. from his point of view, that he can't go down there until after 3 o'clock. Correct. Right. And why is that? that? that that's his point of view. Because of the kids. Because of the camp. camp. Oh, that's can't all be yeah. forgotten. So Same thing with the ice cream vendor. Because what happened in the past, the ice cream vendor, was we used to let him come any time. Mm -hmm. Kids were constantly, it was an attractive nuisance, constantly running to the ice cream truck, trying to bum money off their counselors. So we said, look, we'll make it when the parents come to pick the kids up. If they want to get an ice cream, they can get an ice cream. Thank you for that. And, and uh, now make it reasonable. You know, <laughs> <laughs> But the same thing with the taco guy. We, we, we can't give him a different rule from what we did the ice cream truck. No, no, right? no, absolutely. absolutely. No. But I'll, I'll, I'll call the police tomorrow and find out if there's anybody else have food permits um, for that type of food, not like the cannoli truck or cupcakes right. or cookies or something. Yeah. Next item, if you had one item, then we have an item about Barbara. Yeah, um, if I, I, we want to set up a date for Barbara to come back. <laughs> August Don't is too go. soon. <laughs> Two terms, I bet. I know, yeah. We know. Would well, you want to go to a C, then I'll just add a D? Mm hmm. Oh, and can I add one, too, after well, let's, that? Let's do your issue. Well, it depends, really. No, no, <laughs> seriously. I don't know okay. if they can sell their hot dogs yeah, also. Or, or bake. Yeah. Yeah. Require a vote and financial allocations. What? We don't usually have any vendors uh, at the concerts. No, we don't. Well, I'll just, I guess, and so I'm going to call them going on. Them. I, because they're not a problem, I don't, I don't care. They benefit kids, but... Um, you know, I don't know if that opens up a can of worms, and now we have a whole bunch of That's, different groups. That's, again, the concern, is that we open up a can of worms. But if we open up a can of worms, oh, then we not? could have another rule. I mean, exactly. just, if it's a problem, it becomes a nuisance, then, then we we'll say we some, can't do it for that reason. Then we'll figure out what to do. Mm -hmm. So for the community picnic, we had the, the hockey club. They also did an activity. They had kids hitting, you know, uh, pucks or a ball into a net, so they provided an activity as part of it. And they sold hot dogs. and. Uh, chips and uh, soda and water, and then the civic women were selling cookies. Mm -hmm. And I, I approved both of those because, it, Rose, you remember when we first started in 2000, it really was a community picnic. Yeah. There were a lot of community groups that were part of it. Mm -hmm. They all started to fade away, and it became just a Parks and Rec event with, you know, the inflatables and the, and mm -hmm. the, the uh, climbing, climbing wall, wall and the concert, and that was it. And the Lions Club would do the uh, food. Um, mm -hmm. And so I welcomed that some community groups said, hey, can we be part of this? Yeah. So hopefully we can start growing this event again, like it, like it was back in 2000. But the hockey club has asked if they could do something similar, hot dogs, and then they said probably be more likely baked goods at each of our concerts. And I said I, I got to bring that to the commission. I I think I agree. I think it'd be fun. And if it gets out of hand, then we'll we'll worry about it when it happens. But why not? Okay. Why not? Okay. So do we have to kids. make a motion. Or? Sure. I'll make a motion that we allow the uh, hockey club to come in and sell baked goods and or hot dogs. Second. Second. Oh, all in favor? Aye. 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 They were thrilled to be part of the community picnic, by the way, so they did pretty well. Oh, good. Opposed? Yeah. Abstentions. Motion carried. Yeah, I think okay. it's a good idea. Thank you. And cold drinks. <laughs> yeah. 
So I'm assuming Diane and uh, Van Steenburgen will be here at the August meeting. Uh, so consequently, can Barbara be here at the August, uh, the September 14th meeting? Barbara Pine? Why would I need to be here then? Hmm? Well, we're going to honor you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you can't sneak away without a little yeah, you're honor. Not, you're not getting away. <laughs> you, you've had so many years invested in the dog park, in, in, in the dogs on the beach, in, in the uh, betterments, uh, improvements, and everything else. So your legacy will, is still here, but it will continue. <laughs> Barbara, how many years do you have? Well, it's two eight. year, two four year terms, eight. I believe. Eight. So it's eight years. Yeah, that's a long time. You can come back after <laughs> years absence, though. <laughs> you don't have to answer the question. <laughs> no pressure. But we'll you come back and haunt me. Make sure we got all those rules. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You'll be here anyway. I'll be here anyway. Ex officio <laughs> member. Of the, uh, so, so, so how about September 14th? Sure. Would that be fine, Barbara? If it's not, we can do it in October. Right? I think that's fine. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but I'll be back on the 12th. Because for the October meeting, I might be back in Northern Ireland for several weeks. So. I can see. I know. No, I'm just we want to honor Barb. <laughs> so oh, Barbara's the. Oh, I, I, I was no. I thought you were just working ahead. <laughs> okay, I make a motion we adjourn. No, 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 no. Sorry, no, no, no. She wants I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, I just want to put it out there that um, there is a group of parents in town that are requesting us to look at oh, splash pad. Yeah. So I know I had mentioned it in an email, but I know they're doing their homework before they come mm -hmm. okay. to speak to us, but that is going to come up. So I know, Rick, you had pulled what you guys had already looked at, but just yeah. to have that information on hand so when they come that we can answer questions that mm -hmm. they have um, and be very transparent with it. <laughs> well, that, no, that, I mean, it's really appropriate that you bring that up. What, what we, we couldn't do is bring up a motion which had, which had immediate financial implications. Oh, yeah, no. mm -hmm. You know, which the public wouldn't be aware of, and we voted on it, and that, that would be a problem. So that's just, I'm not sure what meeting they are coming to. I know they were trying to gather together to do their homework on which towns have it, how they've done it. Um, so, okay. and since we've already looked at it, we have some information. So do we make it an agenda item for next meeting, or? I can reach out to them and find out if they're going to come um, so that we know, or if they have any information they want to share with me now that I can share with you guys. I happy to reach out to them. Or just ask them, you know, when they're ready okay. to let us know so we can put it on the agenda. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's a good idea. Yeah. And let them know that the uh, September meeting is the 14th, not the 7th, because of Labor Day. Labor Day. Any other business? Come before the commission. No. Zero. Make a motion to adjourn. Okay. Second. I made second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.